So now it's time to start some examples of uh, evaluating some trig functions uh, using the techniques and concepts that we've talked about from a right triangle trig. So uh, example one uh, is going to be relatively simple compared to some of the ones we'll do later. Uh, but anyway, find the exact values of the six trigonometric functions of theta. Okay, so that just means uh, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. We want to find the values of those uh, applied to theta. So um, we're given this triangle here. We're just given this. So here's theta. Uh, and this side is 2, this side is 3, and of course it's a right triangle. So um, what we have to do then is say, okay, first, before we can do anything, well, we can find two of the trig functions, right? So we know here's theta, here's the opposite side, here's the adjacent side, so we can get tangent and cotangent. But before that, let's just uh, figure out what the hypotenuse is, so then we can find the other four trig functions. So to get the hypotenuse, uh, let's call this x. Okay? So we're going to call that x. So then, uh, remember from the Pythagorean theorem, so that's sort of the trick here, not really even a trick, just the thing we have to do. Uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to find x. So x squared equals uh, 2 squared plus 3 squared. Okay. So uh, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13. So x squared is 13, so then we take a square root of both sides, and so then we get x equals uh, square root of 13. I just want to point out a subtle detail here. Um, when you take a square root of both sides like this, you really should take a positive and a negative root. But since x represents the uh, length of the side of a triangle, uh, x has to be positive. Okay, x is representing a length, so it cannot be negative. So that's why we only take the positive square root here. Okay, just a tiny little detail there. So anyway, uh, x, now we just found out that this equals the square root of 13. So this equals the square root of 13. Okay. So not a very nice number, but not terrible either, I guess. So, all right, so now we come over here and we say, all right, let's go ahead and figure out what these uh, values are. So let's uh, maybe come down here. So now the sine of theta, so remember, what's sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 over root 13. So uh, when I teach this, uh, I don't make my students rationalize the denominator because um, the idea behind rationalizing the denominator is you're trying to simplify something. And if you rationalize the denominator here, it's actually not really going to be a whole lot uh, more simple. But anyway, if you have to do that, um, let's multiply this by. So this is a fine answer uh, here. Sine of theta equals 3 over the square root of 13 is totally fine. But if you have to rationalize or if you insist on doing so, uh, multiply the top and the bottom by root 13. So then you get 3 root 13 over 13. Okay. So yes, the square root's gone from the bottom, but I really don't think that's much simpler than just 3 uh, over root 13. But anyway, um, here's sine of theta, and then uh, cosine of theta. Okay, so the cosine of theta is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So th here's theta, so the adjacent side is 2. Uh, the hypotenuse is square root of 13. So the cosine of theta is 2 over root 13. And again, if you want to rationalize, uh, I don't really encourage it unless you have to. Um, multiply by the square root of 13 over the square root of 13, and then you get 2 root 13 over 13. Okay. Uh, so the tangent of theta, so that's one of the two that we could have uh, obtained without finding the hypotenuse. So we'll come up here. Uh, the tangent of theta equals opposite, uh, oops, over adjacent. So the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Uh, this side is opposite the angle theta. This side is adjacent to it. So opposite over adjacent is 3 over 2. So tangent of theta is 3 over 2. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. Okay. So now we have uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. Let me maybe write tangent down here. Uh, tangent of theta equals 3 over 2. Okay. So I'll clear up some space over here. So now, uh, now that we have these three, it's actually going to be pretty simple to get uh, the other three. Okay, so um, we can still use the triangle if we want, but we really don't have to. It's going to be more work than we need to do. Um, well, not really more work, but just more to think about. Uh, but anyway, um, forget about the triangle now. Now just remember, if we have sine, how do we get cosecant? So cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine, right? So remember, cosecant of theta was 1 over the sine of theta. So if you want the cosecant, just take the reciprocal of the sine. And remember, sine of theta was 3 over root 13. So let's just take the reciprocal of that. So that's going to be root 13 over 3. Okay. And if you really wanted to, you could have taken the reciprocal of this, and then you get 13 uh, over 3 root 13. 
but then you'd have to rationalize the denominator uh, if you insist on doing so. Or you could leave it like that, but this really isn't simplified. Um, so if we multiply the top and the bottom by root 13 over root 13, then we get 13 root 13 divided by 3 times 13. Because root 13 times root 13 is just 13. So the 13 on top and bottom cancel, and we get root 13 over 3, which is the same thing we had over here. Okay. So, um, you know, if we just left our sine of theta as 3 over root 13 and not even bother with rationalizing the denominator, we'd still have this simple answer right here. Um, and then cosecant of theta would be simply this. But if you insist on going, or if you have to go, uh, the route of rationalizing the denominator, you'd go through this, which is not really more simplified uh, than this. Um, and then if you try to take a reciprocal of that, you'll get that. Uh, but it's just more work to do, really. Okay? So anyway, um, just some side notes there. So uh, the point here is that cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. Um, and then what if we want the secant of theta? Okay, so again, we can do this without even looking at the triangle. So forget about the triangle. Remember, secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine of theta. So take the cosine of theta, flip it. So the cosine of theta was just 2 over root 13, right? Before we rationalize anything, uh, the cosine of theta is just 2 over the square root of 13. So the secant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of that. So the secant of theta is 2 over root 13. Or excuse me, root 13 over 2, sorry. Cosine is 2 over root 13, so the secant is the reciprocal of that, which is root 13 over 2. Okay. okay, so that's the secant. And then lastly, the cotangent of theta. And again, we could have that same discussion about rationalizing the denominator there, but I'll, uh, I guess I'll spare you on that. Uh, so the cotangent of theta, we can look at the triangle, but let's just forget about the triangle. Um, remember, tangent of theta is 3 over 2, so the cotangent is the reciprocal of that, which is just 2 thirds. Okay. So that's it there. Um, so that's example 1, and these are the values of the six trig functions uh, of this angle theta. So here's three of them up here. Okay. And then uh, tangent of theta is 3 over 2. And then uh, I'll just box these over here. So again, this rationalizing the denominator, I only include that in case uh, you really insist on that or if you have to for some reason. Um, but I do believe that this is more simplified than this because um, there is really no harm in having a, a square root in the denominator. Um, and when you rationalize, yeah, it goes away, but you have it on top now, and it's a more complicated expression. But anyway, uh, here's the sine, here's the cosine, here's the tangent, and here's the other three up here. So that's example one. Um, with finding the exact values of the six trig functions of theta. Oh, also, by the way, find the exact value. So that's kind of an important thing here. Uh, what that means is leave everything in terms of square roots. So whether you rationalize the denominator or not, just leave everything in terms of the square roots. Don't approximate with the decimal. Okay, because the square root of 13, that's an irrational number. So you can't uh, express it exactly as a decimal. So in other words, find the exact value means uh, don't toss this into your calculator and approximate. Okay, so be careful about that. Um, okay, so problems like this really aren't too complicated. The thing is just remember to use the Pythagorean theorem uh, to find the missing side, and then just remember how the trig functions are defined. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's example one.